Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praise, glory, and honor be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakaha, Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David. This is your brother Matizabath, and I wanted to do a response to this uh, lesson that the beloved elder uh, Karat Tazat um, out in Vegas, GMS Vegas, sit down, 144K, subscribe and be edified, and Salakia, elder, if I mispronounce your Hebrew name. Um, but I sat on this uh, video for about a day or so. Um, and it's very alarming because this is a uh, more evident proof that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, is letting it be known who are the real men of the Lord. And as the scripture says, you shall know them by their fruits. Now, in this lesson, um, you have here this individual on the screen who goes by the name of General Yohanna, all right, which for those of you who don't know, he was one of the um, the men, all right, back then in the School of One West, along with the beloved Apostle Tahar and them. Um, he was around him. Now, I don't know um, if he was directly under Apostle Tahar. One of you brothers can correct me. And um, if you want to put that information on the comment board, you know, for others to know um, the water for that. But I do know that he was around back then. All right. So, he, you know, he's definitely an elder in the game that is in terms of preaching this truth. But nevertheless, um, once upon a time. All right. He being under the elders, then like high priest are and them. All right. He was uh, teaching, you know, the names of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, which they still go into. However. All right. Um, it's been stated. All right. From uh, our apostles on down that they have reasons to believe. All right. That he's taking the bag. All right. Along with other brothers. All right. That stem out of one West um, when it was broken up, when the school was broken up. And uh, since then. All right. He's changed his doctrine and uh, not only changing his doctrine. He's also uh, is trimming his way to seek love. All right. And what you will notice a lot with these uh, individuals is when it comes to our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. Uh, Jake has a tendency of appealing to the crowd. All right. Because we're living in a time where evil is waxing worse and worse. If you say anything that's out of pocket. All right. Uh, in this soft era, you will have what they call. Uh, you will be deemed cancel culture or culture cancel, whatever it is, the term that they want to use for. It. I don't know. The point of the matter is this. Um, we're living in a time where uh, you have Israelites from, you know, different camps, different sects, whatever. They are changing the doctrine to try to soothe the ears of those that listen unto them just so that they can keep their following. <coughs> All right. And. If you're doing that, Salakia for that, um, <clears throat> if you're doing that, um, you're, you're messing, you're, that's like playing with fire with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because the scripture says, all right, um, let's get this precept here that we're not supposed to keep our sword back from blood, all right, because this truth is likened unto a sword. Matter of fact, we'll start off with that before we get into the video, but uh this is Hebrews chapter four and verse 12. It says, for the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All right. And so when the scriptures talk about put on the whole armor all right, of the most high so that we can withstand the wiles of the uh the devil. All right. Part of the part of that armor is this truth, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. All right. And the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is likened unto a sword, a two-edged sword. All right. And 
to build off of that, this is uh, Jeremiah 48 and um, 10. OK, because if you're caught out there uh, keeping this sword, OK, back whilst doing a Lord's work, man, preaching and prophesying. OK, this is what the scripture says. Jeremiah chapter 48 and verse 10, it says, curse be he that doeth the work of Yahweh deceitfully and curse be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. OK, and what's one way of keeping your sword back from blood? You tiptoeing around the topic at hand and you're not breaking it down. Uh, or as the scripture says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's grab that. All right. This is uh, well, first. Actually, Salakia, this is uh, second Timothy two and 15. It says. Study to show thyself approved unto the most high, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What does it mean? Rightly divide the word of truth to rightly divide the word of truth is prior upon you studying. OK. Based off you studying and getting all of the things. All right. Through the measure of faith that's been given unto you to do this work. All right. One, you shouldn't be ashamed because if you had the as it says in Acts 17 chapter. The spirit of the church, Berea, those things that was preached upon them from Paul. All right. And the other uh, um, the other apostle uh, with him during that time. Um, those people in the church of Berea, the scriptures tells you that they searched those things that was taught onto them to find out if whether those things were true or not. Because when you study. All right. And you go into, you know, the breakdowns, the understanding, the root etymology of words. OK. You won't be you won't be put to shame or anything, man, because you will be rooted in the faith. All right. Because you've came up under the tutelage, man. And when you rightly divide the word of truth, OK, you're breaking it down, man. All right. As the scriptures teach us, precept must be upon precept, line upon line here, a little and there a little rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. But what you're about to see here in this uh, video. OK, this is what happens when you uh, appeal. All right. To the people. All right. Instead of remaining humble and being sincere. Let's take a listen. Last earlier, you mm -hmm. clarified on that a precept in Deuteronomy. Okay. He said, is this referring to grape? Which is how they say Six, rape, oh, rape God, in, into the, TikTok. You know? No, no, this is not referring to uh, assault on a woman. That's not referring to that. Read the part that he that make that makes him think that. I remember that years ago. Years ago, there was a ton of fake Israelite groups and Christians that believed that it was a lawful way to assault a woman. Right. And if you assaulted her, you could marry her. Because you Jesus assaulted her. <laughs> Even though, of course, they don't actually do it. I mean, I'll show you what they don't do. All right. <laughs> Read the precept one more time. Oh, God. There's a book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed. So this is a woman who doesn't belong to another man. No one. She's not promised to anyone. You understand? She's single. She's not promised to anyone at all. Keep going. And lay hold on her. And do what? And lay hold on her. And do what? And lay hold on her. Boy, so many Israelite groups and Christians read that word, lay hold, and they thought that meant you could snatch her up at the bus stop. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Throw her in the van. Jeez, damn. That's what they, when they heard lay hold, that's what they believed. <laughs> they believed lay hold. You mean strangle. That's the same thing, right? No, no, no. Is you sure? I don't think so. Right, that's what, yeah, okay. <laughs> they think lay hold me. Get in that van. Get in the van. <laughs> <laughs> no, that disciple of Christ. That's no. That's that's not. Lay, lay hold. You see, this this is a book written by blacks and Latinos, and we speak in slang, right? Mm -hmm. And so, laying hold of a woman is what words do you use for that down here? Game. So that's game. You see, you, 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 game is not mean you actually roll dice with the woman. <laughs> right, play Monopoly with her. Right. <laughs> I, think, right, I, think right. The kid, I think the kids in Philly. They so. 
he's saying that in Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, dealing with a woman who is not betrothed, meaning she is not promised to anyone or engaged to another man. All right. That if she be found in the field and a man laid hold on her. All right. According to our time now, that's the same way of saying in 2024 that if a man be found around her, he's just spitting game to her. And see, this is why we read in Second Timothy 2 and 15 to study to show thyself approved. So without getting too deep into it, because you can watch the elders lesson. All right. And as always, it was edifying. But let's visit that precept. Deuteronomy 22 and 28, it says, if a man find a damsel. OK, that is a virgin which is not betrothed and laid hold on her and lie with her and they be found. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Now to General Johannes point, when it says lay hold on her, that's another way of saying that street talk for spitting game, but not understanding when you actually go into the concordance and you have to look up because remember the scriptures were translated. All right. So let's look up this phrase and laid hold of her. Strong's H 8610. Tafas. Tafas. Okay. So it says here to catch to handle, lay hold, to hold of, to seize or siege, to lay hold of, seize, arrest. All right. Just like if you get pulled over and you're detained, you're under arrest. You've been, you know, laid hold of, man. It says catch to grasp in order to wield, wield you skillfully to be seized, be arrested, be caught, be taken, captured. Now, notice he said here, let's take it back a little bit. Watch this. Hey, believe, lay hold. You mean strangle. That's the same thing, right? Uh, Is you sure? I don't think so. I, that's what go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they think lay hold me. Get in the van. Get in the van. Now, notice how he shook his hand, his hands there, right? He used his hands. Well, when you go into it, see to catch or grasp with hands. And see, the scriptures speak about false prophets, false teachers. Okay, not rightly dividing the word of truth, man. Now, in the Strong's definition, it goes on to say, okay, i.e. to seize, chiefly to capture, will specifically to overlay Figuratively to use unwarrantably, okay, unwarrantably, all right, let's look that up. I actually never looked this up before. Not able to be authorized or sanctioned unjustifiable. An unwarrantable intrusion into personal matters, man. So here it is, you go up to a female and let's say she didn't ask you of anything, she didn't ask for your permission to come up and speak to her or whatever. So you unwarrantable just went up to her and you had your way with her. You humbled her without her permission. You didn't go up to her to speak game. Okay, no, you took that. That's what it means to catch, handle. Okay, to take. <laughs> right? Let's see what else they got here. All right. To lay hold of siege with the hand. Well, accusative, a person. Arrest, catch. Come on, man. It says here, siege Israel, accusative by. 
that Hebrew letter, their heart terrorized them to seeds do violence to the name uh, accusative of my power. And let's see what else they got here. But I think the point has been made. All right. Now here in the Gesenians lexicon, it says uh, to take hold on anyone or anything, hence to take men in war, as an example, uh, to take hold of the name of Yahweh, i.e. to do violence to the name of the Most High by perjury. Uh, let's see here. And it's just giving you an examples. All right. Now, what's interesting, all right, because you ain't got to go that deep in it, but when you read the very next chapter, it says, then the man, verse 29, not next chapter, next verse, Salakia, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Now, if you read this in a different translation, all right, it says, uh, Suppose a man has intercourse with a young woman who is a virgin but is not engaged to be married. If they are discovered, he must pay her father uh, 50 pieces of silver. Then he must marry the young woman because he violated her. And he may never divorce her as long as he lives. A man must not marry his father's former wife for this will violate his father. But let's go into violated her. All right, which in the King James Version to be humble. All right. Or actually, no, here it is. He has violated her. Okay. Strong's H, 6031. Anah. Anah. All right. It says, uh, outline biblical usage to be occupied, be busied with, to afflict, oppress, Humble, be afflicted, be bowed down, man. Okay. Mishandle. What do you think that means? Humiliated. So you ain't speaking game to someone, man. No, you, how do you humble somebody? Let's look at a Strong's definition. It says, uh, through the idea of looking down or browing or browbeating. Okay. To depress literally or figuratively transitive. Or intransitive, it says as follows: a base self afflict. All right, uh, chasten self, deal hardly with, defile, exercise force, gentleness, humble self, hurt, ravish. Okay, what's the, what's let's look up ravish. Okay, ravish. It says. Uh, siege and carry off someone by force. You ain't asking her. You're taking it. That's what it meant in the King James Version to lay hold of. But listen to the second sentence. It says, dated of a man, grape, a woman. Yes. That's what that means. That's what the word ravish means, man. An angry father who suspect that his daughter has been ravished. You see? Now, because we took the time to go through that, all right, let's go back to see what he stated. <laughs> No, that's the disciple of Christ. That's no, that's that's not. Lay, lay hold. You see, this this is a book written by blacks and Latinos, and we speak in slang, right? Mm -hmm. And so, laying hold of a woman is what words do you use for that down here? Game, sir. That's game. You see, you, 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 game is not mean you actually roll dice with the woman, right? Or play Monopoly with her, right? <laughs> right, I, think, right I think the kid, I think the kids in Philly they call it booking a woman, or is that DC? Oh, 
Riz, what is that? Riz, 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 it's like a, it's, that's an offshoot of charisma. Uh, oh, that's nice. Riz. Riz, so what do you call getting a woman's phone number? A woman saying, yes, I'll go on a date with you, or yes, I'll, uh, you know, come see you. A bag, bag, a bag. Bagging a woman. Bag. Now, I'm, a shoot, I'm assuming bag. that's a real problem. You, you, you see how he's trying to trim his way to seek love, man. And that that's really what he's doing. Matter of fact, let's let's grab that real quick. OK, because see, <laughs> if you if really you are ashamed of the gospel, man, you are ashamed of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Jeremiah 2 and 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore, hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. OK, because in the same token or in, in on one end of the stick. Notice how he went around it by saying, oh, it's, today it's in reference of, you know, spitting game to a woman. But we just read that you're taking it by force. She's being ravished unwarrantably. Right. But it also says you're not only trimming your way to seek love by what, you know, you're you're watering down the scriptures. Because majority I believe just like IUIC for based off what I've seen, I'm speaking as a man for myself. Uh, they have a lot of uh, women that follow uh, them as a camp. So what happens when you have a lot of appeal coming from women that are following you? You will have to water down your doctrine. So much so that you start to shine away from the true sound doctrine of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's the reason why here, in, you know, in Great Millstone, all right, beginning with the apostles and elders on down, they don't like us because we don't sugarcoat shit over here, man. We give it to you raw and unedited, man. We're not here for people's feelings. The scripture says in Isaiah, the 58 chapter, cry aloud and spare none. Show my people their transgressions. How do you show somebody the transgressions, man? Hey, the scripture says whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Seek ye out of the book and read. And this is the problem with our people, man. You know, like that, like my man Jack Nicholson said, you know, you want the truth. You can't handle the truth, man. That's how I really be in our, uh, our uh, with our nation of people, man. But check this out. So at the same time, General Yohanna is not only trimming his way to seek love, but he's also, okay, therefore, as it says here, has thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. And you are going around, sir, teaching people how to be fucking wicked. And here's exhibit A. Let's play this clip. This is two years ago. Now, brief introduction. Listen to what he Gave in terms of if he were to counsel Will Smith back when Will Smith uh, slapped uh, Chris Rock, the comedian. Watch what he said. Chris Rock should do this. Is, this would be my counsel to him. Chris Rock cannot beat Will Smith in a fight. More than likely, Chris, uh, Will Smith trains for action movies and he's probably well trained with all kinds of martial arts and fighting styles and guns. This is what. But if he truly wants revenge. And Chris Rock must get revenge in the spirit of Christ. He has to do it or else he won't be a man. Let me tell you what my counsel, if Chris Rock was a man under my supervision, this is what I would counsel him to do. This is the only way Will Smith should un would understand. Chris Rock cannot fight him. Chris Rock cannot assault him. But you know what Chris Rock can do? Chris Rock can fuck his wife. And that's what he should do. Did you hear that? Let me take it back. Maybe you didn't hear it. Man, let me tell you what my counsel, if Chris Rock was a man under my supervision, this is what I would counsel him to do. This is the only way Will Smith should un would understand. Chris Rock cannot fight him. Chris Rock cannot assault him. But you know what Chris Rock can do? Chris Rock can fuck his wife. And that's what he should do. Now. <sighs> Here it is. You're coming in the names of Yahweh Shai, 
and you're calling yourselves the true man of the Lord, telling people that ISUPK is the only camp that has the truth. But yet you're not teaching our people to put a difference between the profane and the holy. And yet you stand here two years ago and say that if you were to counsel Will Smith to, to get payback on another fellow Israelite brethren, that the best thing to do in that situation, based off what Chris Rock said about his wife on stage, is that Will Smith should go in retaliation and F Chris Rock's wife. Really? Let's go back to Jeremiah 2 and 33. Why, why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Right? And so the scriptures tells us in Romans the 12th chapter, verse 17, to recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, the scripture says in Ephesians also, all right. Uh, let's see here. I think it's Ephesians 6. Or actually, no, Ephesians 4. I always get that mixed up. Ephesians 4 and verse 26. Because, yeah, you can make the argument based off the situation. Will Smith was mad at Chris Rock, right? But it says here in Ephesians 4 and 26, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. You don't go and tell another man to sleep with another man's wife because the scriptures tells you for a, a, per, a, a man that does that, right? Proverbs 6 and 32, but whosoever committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own so, man, that's not wise, but here it is. You're telling if I was to cancel Will Smith, I would tell him to go and F Chris Rock's wife. But hey, this is this is who y'all listen to. And then y'all get upset at us over here at Great Millstone. OK, beginning with the apostles and elders on down, because when we when when we do videos like this, OK, all right. It's really to uh, look. The scripture says this, man. All right. Let me let me just let the scripture speak, man. All right. Second Timothy three. And I'm going to start at verse. Uh, I'm going to start at verse. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 13. It says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. All right. And we know Job 12 and um, what's that? 12 and 16, I think. It says uh, the deceive and the deceiver are his, man. All right. It says, uh, verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. And I would like to, if I was in front of General Yohano, I would ask him, when you were under the tutelage of high priest Ariah, all right, and the, and the rest of the elders during your time, okay, were those the same teachings that they have assured you of to tell your fellow brethren that to seek retribution. OK, the best plan of action will be to go and sleep with that man's wife. That's what I would want to know. But anyway, it goes on to say, knowing whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise Unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, 
all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's not righteous to tell somebody else to seek retaliation by go and sleeping with their wife, man. So you instruct those in righteousness so that that man of the most high may be what? Perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Sleeping with another man's wife is not a good work. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, so we're going to close it out. And I'm going to get this here, wrap up Romans 16 and uh, 17. It says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, offenses, Salakia, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Because what you preaching, OK, you tiptoeing around the scriptures, man. And Yahweh Shah said, blessed is he whoever is not offended in me, man. But this is who you Israelites, you know, you can see you, you don't really understand what you are a part of, man. But hey, like I said before, as the scripture said, the deceive and deceive are here. So I'm going to end it off at that. Giving all praise, glory and honor be to Yahweh by Shemi Shai, by Shem Rakak Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David. I'm your brother, Matizabath. Lord's will, this was edifying. So on to the next. Shalom.